What's up guys, John here. Behind me you see the new project car, the Evo 4. We had mentioned this in the past that this was gonna be the new project and it finally arrived. I'm so excited to dig into this. Um, the exterior and running condition was a grade three. For those of you familiar with importing cars, grade three is kind of like um, mid-tier, you know, middle of the road in terms of condition. So I fully expected some mechanical gremlins. Hold on, I'm not focusing here for some reason. Um, one second. All right, we're back. So it looks like I'm back in focus. So as I was saying, grade three is kind of like run of the mill, you know, or middle of the road kind of in terms of quality and exterior running condition. So I fully expected a number of gremlins with this thing. Um, and as you can see here, we're already kind of dealing with some and I will get to those shortly. Uh, but the exterior was in all right condition um, when I got it from the auction. I did have a, a um, body shop over there kind of fix a number of dents and dings and stuff while I was waiting to be shipped over. Um, the car is filthy right now. I, Washington winters where we get nothing but rain. So haven't had a good chance to pull it outside and walk, get a good, good yeah, give it a good wash. Um, the interior was grade C and we'll go over each of the, every little bit of it here in a second, but the interior was grade C. And as you can see, uh, this right here was actually where from some AV equipment. Uh, they actually had a TV mounted right here. Um, and I'll show you in a second. I had a number, like tons of wires that I had to pull out of this thing. They had some crazy AV stuff going on in here. Unfortunately, they lose some adhesive and they did screw into it, but I think this is repairable. Worst case, I'll put a gauge cluster right here after I clean off the adhesive. Um, there are a couple more small screw holes here. So something was here in the past. I don't know what it was. Um, as you can maybe see here, the interior, I don't think the interior dome light, oh, they do, but they're not very bright. Um, there's a number of clips and stuff I gotta clean off. It's a shame because this, uh, this dash is mint otherwise. And uh, finding good clean dashes in these cars is next to impossible. So I'm happy that the dash is as clean as it is, but I was, I'm a little saddened by all this extra cruft they got on here and hopefully it all cleans off well. I think it will. Um, the steering wheel over here is actually, remember it's the right hand drive, so I'm sitting in the passenger side right now, but the steering wheel is actually a Nardi steering wheel. Uh, from the factory, these came with a Momo steering wheel. Um, I don't know why they changed it, and I don't know actually, I don't think this one actually has an airbag in it, which is interesting. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's a really nice steering wheel though, and it's in pretty good condition. Uh, there is some fading, or maybe it's just dirt, I can't really tell. I'll have to give it a good clean and see what it's like, but it looks overall pretty good. Um, the seats are in decent condition. The back seats, uh, it's hard to see in here because there's not very much lighting, but um, the back seats have some like picks in them. So I'll have to try to get those out. Um, the passenger seat is pretty mint, just a couple spots and stains. The driver's seat though, I'll go into the other side and show you guys this. So the driver's side, is kind of, as you can see here, the bolster I think is actually damaged. Yeah, the foam is actually broken right here. Um, and there's a big tear right here. So hopefully I can get this repaired. Otherwise, I think these are actually, these Ricard, these factory Ricardos, boom. Actually, um, they don't, unfortunately Ricard doesn't make the this fabric and this co these colors anymore. But I believe these seats are actually the same seats as the uh, Recaro speeds that they still sell today. Um, if you look at them online, they look almost identical. Uh, so I believe they are the same seat. Um, the other, interior wise, the only other thing is the trunk is missing a number of panels, which is unfortunate. And there is some rust here that is a bit concerning. I'll probably get this remedied at a body shop somehow. Um, there, These cars are notorious for rust, um, especially the underbodies, because Mitsubishi did not coat the underbodies from the factory. And, you know, Japan especially sees a lot of snow and whatnot in the winter in certain parts. So these cars are known to be pretty rusty. Um, this particular one, I haven't had it in the air yet, so I haven't gotten like a good look at it, but from the pictures I saw uh, from the auction, 
the underbody is actually pretty clean. There's there's some surface rust, but there's nothing nothing that I saw that looked weird to me uh, or, or, or bad, I guess. Um, the tires are shot. The wheel, the wheels are in okay condition. There's a number of curb rash on a couple of them. Um, nothing that's not repairable though. I am going to order aftermarket wheels for these, of course. You can't do a build without wheels. Um, the center caps are in terrible condition, but these are, you can actually still get these. Um, and they're only like 12 bucks a pop. So probably just order a placement of those. I do have new tires here for it. I got some hand cook, uh, what did I get here? Ventus, um, Ventus V2s. Uh, they're just standard all-terrain tires. I didn't want to get anything too fancy because I wanted something cheap because I'm going to be, um, replacing you know, the wheels and tires with something larger. And at that point I'll get something nicer, but this is just kind of like the bide my time, get it, get it running in good condition. Um, now the motor. So she does run. When I first got her over here, she wouldn't stay running. She would start, but not stay running. Of course the battery is completely dead. Um, so I've, every time I tried to start her, I've had to jump her, but I got a tender on it right now. Uh, I cannot find a, battery so far that fits this car um there's been two that fit dimension wise but the posts are reversed on them and the positive ter or positive terminal is not long enough to do anything like that even if you flip the battery around so i'm still in the hunt for a battery that will fit this but for now i'm trying to tender it up and hope it's good enough to stay running for a bit um the cam sensor was also bad on it which is why the car wouldn't stay running after i replaced that i did order an oem one from stm tuning but for now i just went to o'reilly's and got a cheapo knockoff just to rule that out because i narrowed it down to either the cam sensor or the fuel pump uh, or the math sensor i was really hoping it wasn't the math sensor because those are a pain to source and there's no really alternative to them um uh the fuel pump i was also hoping it wasn't because you have to basically drop the fuel tank and it's it's doable but a pain in the butt um and i, I do have to do that eventually but i was hoping to get away with not doing that quite yet um and I was really hoping it was a can sensor because that's literally right here. Just one screw and it's out. It's super easy. Um, and it, luckily that's what it was. So it does stay running now. Uh, however, when it is running, and you'll see I have the heat shield, the turbo manifold heat shield off right here. When it is running, there's some smoke coming up from under the heat shield. So I have that heat. I just took that heat shield off. And once the battery is charged up enough, I'm going to... Uh, try to start it again and let it run for a while and see if I can figure out where that's coming from. It, you won't be able to see here, it's just so dark, but I don't, when I had it, well actually, I have a flashlight on me, one second. Oh, it's not as bright enough though. There's really no signs of, um, of head gasket leakage, which is good. So I don't know if it's just a coolant line that's bad or if the turbo's blown, that's a possibility as well. I'll have to really let it run longer and really dig into it to figure out what's going on. I really hope the turbo is not blown. I'm really hoping to have this thing driving by the 23rd because that's when I'm going to be leaving for Christmas to visit family. So I really would like to have it driving by then, but not looking good so far. I had mentioned that there was a number of, a bunch of AV equipment that uh, was in the car. There was things like uh, the GPS system, TV tuner, uh, uh, just all kinds of TV receivers and stuff like this car area system was all throughout the car And as you can see I pulled out a just ton of wiring and stuff Luckily none of it was wired into the actual harness itself. So I didn't have to do any like wire repair I just had to fish it all out and cut a couple places to get it without having to remove a bunch of panels. So Yeah, that was a big effort and unfortunately there were some some of those pieces were on the back windshield and on this side there was like this bar the strip of something i don't know what it was actually for some kind of sensor of some sort and it, uh, it's hard to see here i don't this will focus but um there's this like molding here that the bar was sitting on and when i pulled it off it kind of damaged this molding which is unfortunate because i doubt i can get a replacement of this molding so i'm going to try to clean it up as much as i can and see what i can do so when you get a new used car, any new used car really, you should do a number of maintenance things for right off the bat. Um, so I have a number of things here, which I'll show you in a second. Um, 
there are a couple things missing, like the fuel pump, which is hasn't been delivered yet. Uh, I even went with a Walbrol 255, uh, pretty standard fare for the DSM Evos. Um, you know, it is upgraded, it is higher flow, but I figure I'm going to need to eventually, and dropping the fuel tank in this thing and installing a fuel pump is such a pain that I like to just do it once, and I don't want to have to do it once for an OEM one and then do it again for an upgrade one. Uh, generally, my philosophy is get it running in factory condition before upgrading, um, but in this case, changing out the fuel pump is just such a pain that it's just not worth it, in my opinion. Um, so what we have here is of course the tires I mentioned before. We have full modal fluids. So we have the uh, 300V power engine oil, uh, 5W40, which is what Mitsubishi recommends. Um, we have modal's multi-ATF, which this is for the power steering fluid. Well, power steering, I might actually just use regular uh, ATF fluid because it doesn't anything fancy, but this is mainly for the AYC. Um, system now you do need sp3 compliant atf fluid and this is one most people just recommend using the oem mitsubishi fluid but i love my modal products i swear by, by them i run them in everything from the bike to the track frs to this thing to any dailies i ever get i just i only run modal typically um similarly the gear 300 is the transmission oil and also used for the rear differential and the gsr if i was if i did have the rs or even just the rs lsd the diff from the rs um, I would run the Gear 300 LS in that, but for the GSR rear diff with the AOIC system, uh, regular gear oil is required. So we have a bunch of Gear 300s um, to satisfy everything we need. And we got, of course, NGK plug wires. Um, and I don't know where I put them. NGK BPR7 ES or whatever spark plugs, uh, standard OEM replacements. Um, we have a fuel pump, or sorry, fuel filter. Uh, interestingly enough, so with the Evo 4, 5, and 6, these are uh, in the engine bay, but in the 789, they are in tank. So you, you, and also, I don't believe, yeah, the, the 2G DSM, the second generation GSM, do not fit. So doing a little research, it turns out, uh, supposedly, I guess we'll find out when we go to install this, but supposedly the fuel filter from a like 91 to 2000 or something Toyota uh, RAV4 is is the same fuel filter so I, I was recommended to get this one so we're going to give it a try it looks the same just looking at it so I think we'll be all right uh OEM air filter uh Canon oil filter I wanted to get OEM but I haven't had a chance to order it yet I kind of forgot about it to last minute so if we get to oil before I can get one in then I'll just use the Canon otherwise I'll wait till the OEM gets here um, full timing kit, you know, all the belts, you know, timing, serpentine, etc. Uh, balance, um, and then the all the OEM timing components, uh, like the idler pulley and all that jazz. Water pump as well. Uh, we'll be doing it at the same time. I'll probably do the timing stuff off camera because it's it really takes two hands and it's really kind of a pain in the ass. So uh, holding the camera is just not going to be really an option, I don't think. I may snap some photos here and there and put on my Instagram, but yeah. And I think that's pretty much it on the fuel pump that I mentioned. Uh, so I, as I mentioned, we're trying to get this running, you know, before I leave on the 23rd of December, it is the, I think the 12th today. So I don't got a whole lot of time. So I'm gonna be dropping a lot of content really quickly. There might be some stuff that um, I don't film just because like the, the battery and the camera died or uh, it was just easier to just knock it out really quickly. Uh, in those cases, I'll explain what those are, but yeah, I hope to take you guys on, along for the ride on this build. I think it's going to be a fun one. Um, we are still finishing up the FRS track build, which there'll be some segments here and there on that. Um, and hopefully get that on track this spring, maybe. Um, so yeah, let me, guys, let me know what you guys think of the car. Uh, if you still want to see any other pictures of it. Once we get up on uh, you know, jacks and whatnot, uh, we will have a little more insight into the undercarriage and the suspension and all that. So stay tuned.